And with that, President Barack Obama wraps up the final major speech of the eight years of his presidency. 54 minutes, just about, it went. He said an awful lot. We're here now with Fox Chief Political Anchor, Brett Baer. Brett, is that what you're expecting? For the most part, I mean, President Obama can deliver a speech. There's no doubt about it, Tucker. And no matter what your ideology is, you have to, at this moment, respect the service and sacrifice that a family goes through, uh, not sure. only running for president, but being in that office for eight years. It comes with a lot of perks, but it comes with a lot of sacrifice as well. And I think you saw the president getting uh, emotional there at the end, talking about his wife and kids uh, over the past eight years. You know, he did. You know, on policy, take some swipes, uh, veiled swipes, if you will, at the president-elect and some of the policies. Uh, he defended uh, his record, and he talked about optimism uh, looking forward, that Americans can come together, that he has found faith in different events throughout his presidency. Uh, it is roughly what the White House forecast. He does deliver a speech well. It's the yes. question of whether you can back up all that he said with the facts of the last eight years. Well, what was interesting to me was, and you've covered him closely all these eight years, what he said tonight is pretty much an approximation of what he might have said in 2009 or 2010 or, or any of the intervening years. There wasn't really a sense that a lot has changed during that time, whereas I think outside of the White House, there's a sense that everything is different and everybody is reassessing their previous beliefs. Did you get that feeling from his speech tonight that he has reassessed? I think he has reassessed in a sense, saying that uh, there are people who were hurting, there were people who were left, be left behind, acknowledging yes. that, there were, that they didn't go far enough to get things done. And that was something he didn't really talk about on the campaign trail, as he said that his legacy was on the line uh, in this past election. He now looks forward and says he wants to rebuild not only his party, uh, but help rebuild the country to come together going forward. I think uh, there were some amazing lines in the speech. Uh, obviously, he touched, it was touching for Democrats who had to listen to it uh, and saying goodbye to this president. Uh, but I think there are many people looking at this record and saying the reason Donald Trump was elected was because he didn't hit all the marks in policy. Well, that's right. And you noted that before the speech began, that it would be difficult to have a pure defense of the legacy. I mean, if the three promises of the Obama years were fix the economy, improve race relations, and bring about universal health care, then you could raise serious questions about whether he achieved any of those. But the speech didn't really go to that. From my perspective, it was really at 35,000 feet. It was a soaring speech, and he used the word organizer at least three times, maybe more in that. To me, that sounded like really a, a harbinger of what's coming that he is trying to inspire people who share his worldview. I mean, he is setting the stage for what he's going to do next, which is a very something very public, isn't it? Yeah, he's saying lace up your shoes, get the clipboard, make it happen. If you're tired of talking to people anonymously on internet, talk to somebody in person. He's trying to fire up his party, and as we talked about going in, Tucker, it is a party in the wilderness when it comes to the politics of where it goes. But the images here of him with his family in Chicago, as I mentioned, just a few miles away from Grant Park where he accepted the victory in 2008, um, for Democrats, I think, is probably a double-edged sword. There is some right. sense that there's real sadness, but there's also, where does the party go from here? Right. Well, it's nothing grows in the shade. And whenever you have you know, a figure as large within a party as he was in his, it's pretty hard to raise up the next generation of leaders because they, of course, remain uh, in his shadow. Is that going to be a problem for Democrats going forward? If he doesn't retreat into the solitude and silence and the speaking tour that is the conventional post-presidency and remains a public face of the Democratic Party, I mean, that, it's, that has massive implications for where the Democrats go next, doesn't it? It does. And he will have a big role, no matter what happens, in the future of the Democratic Party, whether it's an endorsement, whether it is uh, guidance. This speech was a blueprint forward. Uh, but it also was a call to unity, a call to uh, come together. And while he did take some veiled swipes at President-elect Trump and policies that he embraced, he also said this is a smooth transition that will happen. He pledged to do it just like George W. Bush did for him. I think that was the part where the audience booed pretty yeah, it loudly. Was. In that, in that <laughs> hall, they definitely did. But I think uh, throughout America and maybe some of those states that didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, uh, they were happy to hear him at least say that. But stylistically, and, and really also in content, but could you find 
an order more different from Donald Trump than Barack Obama and vice versa? No, Barack Obama is soaring rhetoric. Barack Obama is um, this, you know, sometimes flowery language. Um, Donald Trump is, is more practical in not only his delivery, but what he's trying to say. And um, I think that the pendulum has swung, and yes. uh, we'll see how the uh, baton hands over in just a few days. Since you cover the White House and you're around these guys all the time and you talk to them both on and off the record, is there a recognition that as popular as the polls suggest he and his family are personally, Barack Obama, that this last election really was a personal rejection of his legacy. Do you get the sense they feel that way? They don't. They, they feel very defensive uh, about President Obama. They say he leaves with high approval ratings. And uh, I don't think that the, how they explain the loss is uh, what they talk about. Interesting. Always worth learning something, I think. Brett Baer, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.